Hello, my name is Dr. Monica Winanita, and welcome to part two of my lecture on the Global Extended Family Literature Review. The literature on transnational family in Southeast Asia have focused on low skill female migrants and their children. For example, children who are born overseas to migrant mothers who are working as domestic workers, maids or nannies, either Indonesians or Filipinas in Hong Kong such as the book here by Nicole Constable. Another example are of children who are left behind while their mothers work as domestic workers in countries such as Hong Kong or in Taiwan, Saudi Arabia or other developed countries where their children remain in the home country either in the Philippines or in Indonesia. Final example is research on children who join their mothers years later, particularly mothers who are Philippine, live in care workers in Vancouver, Canada. So these are Philippine migrant women who work to care for the elderly or very young children and live in the same home as the people they care for. These Philippine migrant women if they have been employed continuously for two years, are able to sponsor their children to join them in Canada and become permanent resident. These children are often teenagers by the time they join their mothers. My contribution to literature looks at other experiences of transnational mothering. Transnational mothering, as a concept, uses the definition of transnationalism as it is first coined by Besch et al. in 1994, whereby immigrants forge and sustain ties with both their host country and their original home. My research on Indonesian women who are mothers are those who reside permanently in Australia. So they either migrate with their family or they ended up starting a family in Australia. Some of the women that I did research with also are married to Anglo-Australian men and they wish to start a family with them once they reside permanently in Australia. Therefore they have a mixed intercultural family. But these women are not low skill migrants. They are either marriage migrants who came through spousal visa or de facto partner visa or they are skilled. They have qualification that are considered for skilled visa migration to Australia such as nursing qualification, or a tertiary education that enables them to work in a skilled profession, such as an Indonesian language teacher. For these women, they have to negotiate the ideals of a transnational Indonesian-Australian mothering, both mothering in the host country, residing permanently in Australia, and negotiating ideals of what it means to be an Indonesian woman, an Indonesian mother, which is a transnational ideal from their home country. Mothering in Indonesia is an ideal form of femininity. Research by Dragoslovic and Robinson and Bessel have described the domestication in housewifeization of Indonesian women, whereby the ideal is to mother two children. And if you are of a middle class, you would have your own maiden nanny, most likely coming from a poorer rural area to work in your home, and you manage the household or do the emotion work where you take care of the emotional well-being 
of your nuclear family, your husband and children, as well as be in charge of educating morally your children. According to Brenner, this is a performance of ideal Indonesian femininity. The word for mother in Indonesian is ibu. This translates to, in English, both a mother, a wife, as well as the honorific of a missus. And if you do not perform these roles, you are regarded as less than a woman. Being an ibu is also promoted by state-sanctioned women's organization under a discourse which Churya Kusuma argues as state ibuism. State ibuism sees the role of women as an ibu or mother, wife and missus as the ideal role while becoming a citizen is secondary. So becoming a tax-paying worker is a secondary role as a citizen in Indonesia to having the ideal femininity of becoming a mother, wife and missus. The Western feminist scholarship that affects Australian forms of ideal femininity have come from the 1970s, such as work by Antheus, where she described the effects of femininity for Australian women in the family as an oppressed and subordinate role, whereby being a housewife or doing housework is a labour that is not commodified. Arguably, these roles are not performed for money, but for expressive reasons, such as love and duty to the nuclear family, the husband and the children. However, working outside the home is considered a profession, unlike being a housewife or mother, which is not considered a profession as it is inside the home. My next lecture, part three, will describe case studies of Indonesian women who mother in Australia and have to negotiate both an Indonesian and an Australian ideal of femininity. I have here also provided references to the literature review, which you can view in the PDF handout of the PowerPoints. There are six references per page and 12 in total. Thank you.